Hello, beautiful divine souls. Welcome to Goddess on Leash or Goddess of Rebirth, depending on what platform you're tuning in. The space where we explore transformative journeys and intentional living. I'm your host, Monica, and today I am so thrilled. I'm so blessed and excited to have a divine, magnificent guest with me, a healer, a visionary, the founder of the Empowering Goddess Bath Experience. Welcome, Nicole. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, Monica. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm I'm honored. I am so, so happy that you're here with us. You have such an empowering insights and such a beautiful conversation that we're going to be having in this space. So welcome. I want to um, give you a few minutes just to tell us who you are. Tell us like the full package who are you all of those like beautiful things that you do and how do you do it all yeah uh thank you for that beautiful question um i love <laughs> sharing this component of my story because it's taken me many years to anchor in all that i am and so i am nicole dominique levens and i am what you would consider a multi-hyphenate talent so all the hyphens, all the slashes, <laughs> and they didn't all come at once. They've come over time, but I'm a multi-hyphenate talent in the field of acting, singing, songwriting. I am a meditation um, healer, and I'm also an international guest speaker, presenter, and I am the founder and creator of the Goddess Bath Experience. And so, yeah, and I'm sure I'll discover more things <laughs> as I continue to walk this life. And that's what showed up for me of who I am, the things that I love to do and how I love to take care of myself, how I love to take care of my family as far as my gifts and my offerings in the world. And they're in order of, of how they came into being first. Like it was the acting was first and then the singing and all the other things got added along my journey. Some of them I knew and some gifts were revealed to me over time. <laughs> and so what it's taught me is to be honest about what's available for me, to me, through me, as me, and dropping into the truth of my existence. Like what's lighting me up? Like what's real for me? What's honest for me? And standing as source for that, standing as truth for that and being able to own all parts of me, something that my fiance always says, and it's still one of his quotables, which is all parts of you are welcomed. And when I think about that, I think about so many women, men, however you choose to identify, there's typically like a boxing that'll happen um, within our lives unintentionally, where it's like, I'm going to go be a doctor. I'm going to go be a lawyer. I'm a singer. I'm this, I'm that. And we get locked into these titles instead of being in our ways of being and allowing who we are to like develop and come through and pour through as a result of our ways of being. And so I feel really honored and blessed that I've been able to activate and have success in all of my hyphens <laughs> that have shown up for me. But I think that's because I say yes to each of them as they're coming through as crazy as they sound. I feel like the goddess bath experience is probably one of the craziest things that came through for me that I never in my wildest dreams would have imagined this component and aspect of my life showing up in the way and the force that it has. And we'll get an opportunity to dive a little bit deeper into that. But that's that's who I am. Um, part of who I am, right? There's also the side of me that's a woman that is a future wife, a future mom. I'm also a daughter and a sister and a cousin and a friend. And so when you think about it from that perspective, we all are multi-hyphenated beings. Like we all wear several hats in our lives and in our communities. And for me, I just choose to live them out loud um in a way that not only serves me but that serves everyone around me and that ultimately serves humanity that is so powerful and so beautiful and i do feel something that i'm feeling right now is how important it is that you define success in your own terms i feel like sometimes we might be like you say i'm my image of success is being defined by someone else or by society or by whoever and so in my effort to trying to achieve that, I'll miss out so many other opportunities, so many other experiences, and I that are gonna be part of me. So something that's resonating from what you're saying is 
I experience a little bit of all and I succeed on all of those things that I do. But it's because you are defining your own success and you're telling yourself, I want that. I want these and this is who I am. You're giving yourself that permission. That is so, so powerful, so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, the other part of that, and we were talking a little bit about this before, but how you were telling me about your community, how important it is, how, yeah, that's, that's a crucial part of who you are, your experience, your success. Tell me a little bit how, what does it mean to have a community? How did you build a community? How And what's your advice for other women? Yeah, use? thank you. And I'm curious too, because like what comes up for me when I hear how did I build my community? It's a few things comes up. It's like the community that I've literally built, that's my company, that is the community that's a God is bad experience. Or is it like my personal community, like my friends, my personal development, my coaches. So I'm like curious, cause like, when you when you first asked the question, I think it went in the direction of like, how did I personally build it? But then as I heard it this time, I'm like, well, actually, there's a deeper layer that's coming through of like all community that I've built. So I'm curious um, if there's a particular one that you're you're speaking into. I think both parts are really important. If you could speak about both and how do you integrate? How I've built my community and I'll I'll speak into uh, the goddess bath experience first when it comes from like the business side of things is I, my intuition, I listen <laughs> to my intuition first and foremost um, around like what is available to me and really reaching out to like my personal community. So what that looks like for, for me when it comes down to brass taxes, I I hosted an event. So that's the first thing that we did. I have an event background. So it was very natural to me to host event an event. It was an online event. It was like a two hour moon ceremony online. And I leveraged my already community that I have, which is like my social platforms. Uh, also like other women in my life. Um, I asked them to share and post about it. And then I had two women that I met along my path as soon as I decided I was going to start creating the goddess bath experience. I had two women show up, Jewel Schroeder and Jolie Dawn, um, who are friends and have been mentors to me who are business owners and they support women setting up their businesses. And they came in to support my first event that I had. And then they also shared with their communities as well. And I was off to the races. I think we had about a hundred women register and, um, I created like a beta offering, like I did a subscription box along with like a multi moon circle just to test out my process with other women and the products and things that I was using and we we sold out. And so that's how I knew I was like, okay, there's something to this. So what I did was I leveraged the community that I already have. We all have community, whether we choose to look at it that way or not, like you, like whatever social platforms you are in, whatever school you went to, like church communities, whatever that look like, looks like, look at the communities you already belong to and leverage those connections, even family, friends, like one-to-one -one connections and let them know what you're up to and sharing that. And for me, it looks like an event a launch event, which many companies do, right? Many communities do. When you have a new community, you have some sort of launch event to say, hey world, I'm here. And this is what we're up to. And this is what we're offering. And so that would be, you know, my biggest advice and biggest gift was that I I put it out there. I didn't wait. It was, you know, from the idea to thought, it was like 30 days of me like having this download that came through and like me jumping on it and and like creating something, not even really knowing how it was going to go and going with that. There's a lot of amazing things that happen. And there's also some mistakes I made along the way. And each thing that I do, I build upon that every single time. So that was how I built the Goddess Bath community was like through my personal community that I had and then leveraging communities of other women that I was already in contact with around me and leveraging them. Um, in their communities and, and supporting each other. Like I've done the same thing. I've had other women come in to my community and like um, just sharing 
being in collaboration um, is how I've grown and built community. And it looks very much the same way in personal community in my life. Like I have coaches, I'm always working with a coach or inside of a program or inside of like some sort of community where I'm learning and up leveling. Um, I have like my, my different friendship tribes and communities that I belong to, um, communities for acting, communities for singing, community communities for business to, you know, support me in, in business own business as being an entrepreneur. So I, I have community for everything, community for relationship with my fiance, like there's communities that he and I belong to together. So it's really about like, what are your interests and like who else is out there that has already built a community that you can plug in and belong to. And I'm a firm believer if it doesn't exist, then it probably means that you're meant to create it. Um, so that's what showed up for me in that space of how I build community and how I continue to build community. That's so beautiful. And when I was, the part that uh, resonated with me is how excited we actually get as women. I, that has been my experience. I'm pretty sure that it's, it's a similar experience for many others. But as women, we get excited about seeing other women like, you know, shining and coming up with a new project or a new idea i do get excited when i when i when i saw what the goddess path experience was i was like that is so sacred so beautiful oh my gosh i need to know more and so you will always find people who who will see like this this new idea and be like yeah let's do it tell me more and there you go you build more community and you were also saying how people will show up you're just trying to find, you know, how do I build this? How, what, how does this work? And then people will knock on the door and be like, oh yeah, I've done it before, or they know the way. And that's so, that's so beautiful. That is so, so powerful as well. Mm -hmm. And now that you were speaking about the goddess path experience, tell me a little bit about that very, very sacred story. How did you come up with the idea? What does it mean to you personally? Well, um, it is my, my ritual that I've done for many, many years. And what it is, it's an intentional ritual. It's an intentional ritual bath. And um, how I came up with the idea was something that I've been doing since I was a little girl. I learned about um, spiritual baths from my grandmothers. Um, when I was a young girl and, and when I would get sick, my grandmother and my father's mother um, would make these baths for me. And she would put different herbs and oils and something called Florida water. If you're in the Southern states of the United States, there's like the, this thing called Flor Florida water, which is like this um, perfumed, fragrant, like blessed um, water that is used to like, it's a cleanser, use a cleanse energy like Palo Santo or Kapal, but in liquid form. And um, I would soak in the tub. She would even put me in ice baths growing up when I had a fever, like she would draw me ice baths and like sit me in ice bath. So I'm, I've grew up using water as a tool to heal. Uh, so I took that ritual and it was something that I personally used all of my life to heal, to manifest, to celebrate, and it was kind of like a secret. I, I like, if you knew me, you were in my personal life, you knew I was like into baths. And during COVID, as many of us did, we we're all sharing on social media because what else were we doing locked up in the house? I started to share and post my my baths, my bath rituals that that I was doing. And I was getting a lot of traction and a lot of questions and people asking me like, oh my God, like, what are you doing? with these baths, like, how are you manifesting? Like, what is manifesting? So I was getting all of these people, getting all these questions asked about this bath. And I, I, there was a process that I would do in the bath. It wasn't just like soaking and sitting. That was a process that developed. And um, the process that was developed came through two different ways. The first way I knew I had a really deep connection with water and water being a portal um, and I believe it's the story you heard me share um, when you saw me speak was um, an incident that I went through with my mother. When I was seven years old, my mom was um, diagnosed bipolar schizophrenic and she was institutionalized 
for a little bit of my childhood. And when she came out, she was on a lot of different medications on and off of it. And she was already struggling with mental illness. And then the medication adds another component of that. And this is like in the 90s when mental health was not really the hot topic. We're not having the conversation that we weren't having the conversation like how we're having the conversation now. It was very much like drugs and church were like the solution. Um, and and those things, depending on what the ailment is, absolutely do support. And there was another component that was happening with my mother that those two things actually were like adding um, to the illness and not supporting. And there was one particular night where she was having a manic episode and it was just me and her home. And she went into my room, pulled me out of bed. She had run a tub of water. She threw me in and held me under. And for her, she thought a demon was like inhabiting her daughter's body because the, you know, bipolar and schizophrenia, it the way that it showed up for her and it's it's so different for each person who's been diagnosed, it's like such a range. But for her, it was like when she would go into these manic states, it was like one foot in reality, one foot out of reality. And there were things that she was seeing and experiencing that were happening for her that were not happening in, in the reality of others around her. And she believed she was drowning this demon out of me. Me as a seven-year-old child, I'm not understanding that to be the case now being an adult and unpacking all of that and going back and like having a lot of support through therapists and coaching and all the things of, and even you know having healing the relationship with my mother as an adult unpacking all that I'm able to share that story in a way that I could not share it you know previous years I couldn't share it without crying there was so much pain and hurt and anger um, that came in sharing that story. And I remember like having a conversation with God in that tub and like asking for my life and being granted that. And there was a part of me that died there. And there was a part of me that was born in that moment that forever shifted my relationship with my mother, my relationship with myself, my relationship with people and everything on the other side of that. And so that began a deep healing relationship and connection and commitment to water. Um, I, I refused to get in water for a long time after that, but it was such this deep calling for me to be in water, work with water, and a lot of healing over the years took place for me to get there. And I would say my high school years or when I was when I started to really develop a deeper relationship with baths and it started to shift and transform for me um, as a tool for healing, a sacred space for me to relax and unpack what had happened to me in that day. It became more of a safe haven. And I would say the process came through to me as an adult. Um, I, I'm going to put a disclaimer out there. This is a story that does involve suicide. So for anyone who has sensitivity to that, I'm gonna pause for a moment so that maybe you can skip through <laughs> this moment of the podcast or get the support around you as you listen to it um, for me to be able to share that. So the second component was I, at the time, I'd, I'd been doing baths and doing some components of the process now, but it wasn't solidified in the way up until this moment. I was dating someone I was that was verbally abusive, physically abusive, mentally abusive. And we had an episode where we decided to um, have a have a threesome. And um also another disclaimer, there's also a sexual abuse story attached to this as well. And I had this experience with my then partner and it did not go well. Um, they were a little bit reactive to it in a way that I didn't expect. And uh, on the other side of that experience, I was thrown out of their house, like in my underwear, completely humiliated and embarrassed. Um, and at that particular time in my life, I was already really going through a lot in my world, toxic relationships. My career was not in a space that I wanted it to be in. I 
also was in friendship component com relationships that weren't really supportive at the time. And familiar relationships like with my family were also strained at that moment. So I felt really alone. I felt um, out of alignment with myself, out of alignment with my purpose. And I went home and I got in the tub and I slit my wrist and I started to bleed out. And I remember blacking out. I remember like there was like bright white, then a blackout. And then I came to, like, I don't know how long I was out, but I remember when I woke up, I like patched up my arms. Like I, something happened to me when I traveled wherever I went and I decided to come back. And what I came back with was this modality called the goddess bath experience. And I had a clear process, a clear vision of like, what it meant to do healing work in the water, what it meant to, what it meant to die and be reborn, reborn through water, because that was my second time. And that I got to teach this um, to everyone around me, that this is a way to commune with the divine. It is a way to heal. It is a way to create. And water in many different cultures is revered as a healing technology, as a manifestation technology. We use it in many, many different religions. Um, it is cited, has been cited, you know, as a as a as a ceremonial component in many different cultures all over the world for thousands of years. So this is not like some secret that I, <laughs> that I'm I'm sharing. It's it's something that we're very clear on the power of water, and there's been many scientific studies done on the power of water and the healing component of water and the intellect the knowledge, the wisdom that water holds. And there are many communities that believe water is the key element of life. It holds the actual like scientific code component to life, the recipe of what creates life. And when you look at it from that component and we're like, what, 70% water, there's a power in knowing and understanding how to work with this, this natural element to create and to heal and to transform. And I believe my journey and my story, I've been married to it in a way, probably in many different lives, uh, to be able to share this experience. I went through all of these things to be proof of what is possible when working with this element. And um, it's been such a gift in my life. It's been such a gift, obviously, to the community that I, that I have built and I would have never imagined that it would show up in the way that it has. Like sharing both of these stories used to be such an like an embarrassing part of my journey that I never wanted anyone to know. And the more I share it, the more women are like, oh my God, me too. And thank you for this process. Like this has shifted and changed my life. This gives me permission to share my story. And when we share our stories, we realize like we're so much more connected than we ever are disconnected. And I choose to not walk in the shame of my own story and my own choices. Um, I choose to be empowered by them. Um, and the more I share them, the more it frees me from any of that shame. And the more it frees someone else every time it's it's heard. So that that is <laughs> the where the goddess bath experience was birthed from. You know, it's it's a pain to purpose story that I wouldn't trade for for anything. Yeah. Wow. We're just gonna take a minute to let all of that sink in because it is you can feel the holiness of your story nicole mm -hmm. it's it's visible i i love to to feel things that's my that's my gift like i i i sense it and i the first time i so let me tell you this part first when i heard your story the first time you were talking about something else, like something about, I don't even remember that part that you were talking about during that interview that I was I was watching. And then all of a sudden you say, and I feel right now that I need to share this part of my story. And you started speaking and I was, I went to a different place. 
Mm. I was I was hypnotized by what you were saying. Like it was so it was resonating deep, deep, deep within me. And then you said, and I, I don't know, this is going to help someone out there. And I was in tears, like, how is this happening? Because like that last part you said, the more I share this story, the more I know it frees me and it frees someone else. And I, I was in my, in my, I think it was in my bedroom, but I was in tears thinking like, how did she know, how did she give herself permission to, you know, like, go through all that pain, free herself, and now liberating thousands of women, because I know that you're going to reach global audiences. Like it's going to reach, yeah, it's going to go to places far away. And the thing is, as you were speaking right now, um, I thought, imagine how beautiful it is, and especially for our listeners, anyone who's going through a really difficult time at the moment, through terrifying experiences. Imagine if the you from the future is having this moment and saying, it's gonna be all right. And look how far you will go. Like imagine that moment where that person in the future comes back at you and says, we're gonna build this company. We're gonna have this sacred journey. You're gonna help women like, ah. Uh, that is powerful, mm. so holy, so sacred. Mm. And I, I'm grateful that you're sharing this, this very tender part of your story, very tender part of you, and that you're not hiding it. That you're not saying like, you know what? No, I'm, I don't want to get into that part because it's, it's tender, it's vulnerable. You get in there and you, there's this power that comes out of you. There's this superpower that comes out of you when you're sharing. And that is just so, so beautiful. I want to say this one more time for anyone who was listening and felt that they felt that deep in their hearts. It's going to be all right. Something mm -hmm. amazing, something really sacred and holy is going to come out out of all of these experiences. I think that sometimes in the digital world, we're talking a lot about healing, healing these, healing that, but we don't see the depth. We don't really let ourselves feel how profound, how Im the impact of it, the generations that are gonna talk about is after we're gone, our legacy, like it's it's mind blowing. So I really thank you for, for that. Thank you for the opportunity to to share my story and the platform to do that. Yeah. And tell me about how the goddess path ritual is changing lives. What does it mean from the eyes of perspective of other women who are going through the experience and they're giving you the feedback and you're what's the impact? Tell me a little bit about that part. Yeah, the impact, I think the foundation is like safety is permission because what I teach is for you to do it at least minimum once a month. Um, once a week is optimal, but once a month will will support, especially if you're first starting off in the journey. And what happens is because you're taking that moment for yourself. I mean, it's a self-care practice. It genuinely is. It's a foundation is self-care. And I believe that's the space that we create and heal from when we decide and choose to love on ourselves. It's like in out, it is not out in. So you get to choose you first. It's also like, it's Christ consciousness as well, right? And you don't have to believe in Jesus Christ to believe in the message. At least that's that's my belief on it. Um, it doesn't matter to me whether this person existed or not. His story has existed for, for thousands of years for good reason. And you know, Christ consciousness is real. It's like, love thy neighbor as you love yourself. However, like, who do you get to love first? <laughs> you. And, you know, the, the ritual that is the goddess bath, being a self-care practice, it creates safe space for women. For men too, because there are men are having you choose to identify that also do this ritual as well in our community. And it creates safe space because you're taking time to curate this temple, your bathroom, you turn it into a very sacred temple space. 
um, in that in that process, you're cleaning and clearing your energetic space, the physical space to clean out what isn't serving you, whether that be old stories, whether it be limiting beliefs, whether it be literal physical things in your life that you get to clean and clear out um, for you to get clear on your intention and your purpose. And it might just be for the moment or it might be for your entire existence. But whatever that intention is, it's allowing you to create that safe space to believe that it's possible to heal yourself, to then have that translate in a way that creates results. Like I've had women in my community birth businesses, um, allow them allow themselves to like create open up a creative avenue for themselves that they weren't able to before. Like some women realize, like I've always wanted to be a singer and I never felt like I had permission that I could because I'm a lawyer. And what does that look like if I'm a lawyer and a singer? And it's like, well, it looks like what you look like because that's who you are. <laughs> and if you've never seen it, well, amazing. Show us what it looks like to be a lawyer singer. Like what you know what I mean? Whatever that is, I think it's permission to be authentically you. And like we work with the energies of the leading lady and of the goddess and of the empress. And it's like, how do you be that in your life so that you can live the fullness of what, what you're creating? So it's safety, it's permission, it's personal power. And when you move from a place where you love who you are so deeply, so inherently, it does activate your personal power. And then there's nothing that you can't achieve. Like there's nothing that you can't have because you know who you are. And so what I'm providing here is you. <laughs> it's a return home to your authenticity, the version of you that was born into this world before the world got to you, before you forgot who you were, before you forgot the mission that you came here on. It's a return to you. And like that's invaluable. It is priceless for you to own and know who you are, like know who you are to the core and own that from a place that feels authentically safe. I believe that there's something in the invisible world, in the in the spiritual world that we we cannot see with our eyes, but our bodies recognize all of the codes that we put into the water, into the blessings, into the rituals, into our spaces, like everything is creating resonance. And we know you, you change like the, you shift that energy in a room by the simple way you're feeling, the way that you're speaking, the way that you're dreaming. It, it's, it's so beautiful. And um, I do believe that having a moment for you, having a moment where you let that water give you, you know, that power back and, and say and reflect you saying like, goddess, I'm here for you. And let me show you how powerful, how beautiful, how, how many possibilities. Give yourself permission to be that singer, that actress, the dreamer, the creator. That is part of your message. That's why I feel like I, I need to have Nicole in the podcast like this is this is powerful it's, it's it's beautiful it's a beautiful journey and i i'm really really grateful that you're doing what you're doing um water is sacred i you know something else that came up for me when you were speaking was the different cultures i'm mexican mm. and so i didn't grow up honoring my my ancestral wisdom but i've been reclaiming that part of my culture and it's been interesting to see how many different cultures from the opposite side, different sides of the world have the exact, exact same principles about water, about rituals, about ceremonies. And it's, it's a reclamation that I feel like all women need to give them, themselves permission to do. Beautiful. I love that so much. Yeah. Thank you for your thoughts on that and your clarity on, on what it provides for women, what it's given you knowing about it. And yeah, that's just so beautiful. <laughs> I know. Thank you for sharing about the Gothba experience and like inspiring me to do better and to keep pursuing my dreams. And is there any other piece of advice or anything you would like to share? 
Whew, yeah, piece of advice if you choose to take it on. Um, whatever serves you, serves you. If it doesn't serve you, please leave it. <laughs> That's my, um, I, I would say to trust yourself. That's my biggest piece of advice is to trust yourself. It's one of the things that I've learned. It's something that I continue to deepen my practice of because like your intuition will never steer you wrong. It is, it's the beautiful gift that we have all been born with is the gift of our intuition. And it, it knows, it knows, and it'll never guide you or steal you wrong. And so like noticing when that whisper shows up for you and when that whisper becomes a scream and then the scream becomes the cosmic two by four that is kicking you off the cliff. <laughs> and so my advice would be is like, listen to the intuition, listen to the, the whisper and respond at the level when it's a whisper before it becomes the cosmic two by four that forces you to have a listen because your higher self knows it's always walking the walk with you. It's always guiding you along your path. It is attuned and tapped in to your purpose, the purpose that you will love, that serves you in the highest and best way, that will utilize all of your gifts and talents. And so like, listen to you, trust yourself. And I know it's easier said than done. It's a walk that I'm on with you. There are some things I trust myself inherently on. And there's some times where I do question myself. And so I'm talking to me too right now of like, Trust my inner knowing. Trust your inner knowing. And allow that even to be a mantra for yourself. It's like, I get to trust my inner knowing. I get to trust me. I get to trust and know that I do have the answers. I know how to heal myself. I know how to take care of myself. I know how to provide for myself. I know how to create abundance for myself. I know how to create loving, supportive, amazing community around me. I am love. I know how to be love. I know how to attract love. I know how to give love. Like that's that's all true. Trust you. Thank you so much for that last part. I think that um, just two things that are coming for me through what you're saying. Community is also in the invisible world. Like, you know, our guides, our spirit, our ancestors, like there is so much support available to all of us. And closing back to what you said at the beginning, every part of you is welcome here. And perhaps that gift, you're so much looking for that abundance, that prosperity, that love, deep, profound love is hidden in those parts that you're not embracing. So, so dear listeners, Thank you so much for taking the time to, to join us. And here was a, a short, a little glimpse into the sacred world of the Goddess Bath experience. If you want to learn more about this holy practice, reach out, Nicole. Nicole, tell me, where can people find you? Yeah, I'm a hangout on Instagram the most. It's my, It's just at Nicole Events, which is my name. Also, you can go to the Goddess Bath website. We also have a free gift. So it gives you a, a guided meditation by me, a journaling prompt, and then also a Goddess Bath recipe and the Goddess Bath steps to get you off on your journey. So you can find that at www.goddessbaths.com slash gift. So that's goddessbaths.com slash gift. Wow. So we're leaving you with a life-changing experience and a gift and lots of inspiration. Thank you so much, Nicole, for spending this time with us. Thank you so much, dear listeners. And until next time, remember to honor the goddess within, embrace intentional self-care, and continue the journey of becoming the most empowered version and radiant version of yourselves. I'm Monica. Stay tuned for more empowering conversations and transformative insights. Nicole, thank you so much. Thank you. I am thrilled to have you in my circle and I am buzzing with excitement to conjure up some magic together. Remember, in Goddess Unleash, we don't just talk the talk, we walk the mystical walk. Tune in and transform with me. Until next time, keep your spirits high and your magic untamed.